Today we're going to be talking about two-dimensional figures. And we're going to be, be defining a few terms and then talking about some area and perimeter. And that area and perimeter, I almost expect you to know um, from previous mathematics classes. Okay, polygons. This might be a new concept to you. So a polygon is a closed fig figure formed by a a finite number of coplanar segments called sides. Okay, so each one of these is a side to our polygon. Okay, and our polygons have common endpoints and are and are non-collinear. The sides of a polygon have common endpoint, have a common endpoint and are non-collinear. Okay, we have vertexes of our polygon are each one of these points. The polygon is named by its vertices written in an order of consecutive vertices. So typically we do alphabetical order. So we start with G and we move around G, H, J, K, L, M. Okay, so you move around from one vertice to the next in naming your polygon. Okay, polygons typically have all straight lines. There's no curves. See how this has kind of a curve to it? Um, this isn't enclosed. If this was enclosed, then it would be a polygon. I have a straight line with a curve. This is an oval. This wouldn't be a polygon. This wouldn't be a polygon because the lines connect. Convex and concave polygons. So I look at this differently than our book. I guess I was just taught it differently. When you extend the lines of the sides, they don't extend into the interior at all. Versus this one, a concave, I look at it as like a cave, it has a dent in it. Yeah, our lines extend into it. How I learned this, and this might be more helpful to you, is if you have a point here, a point here, and part of that line, when I connect those points, is outside my polygon, then you know it's concave. Or I kind of look at it like it has a dent, okay? Like this one here, up here, is concave. It has a little dent in it, okay? Um, all the rest of those are convex polygons. Okay, classifying polygons. Please make sure you write this in the next slide down. Um, this is really important. An n-gon is a polygon with n sides. And I'm gonna be calling certain, like a four-sided one, we're gonna be calling a quadrilateral. Okay, and there's certain specific names that I want you to remember. But once we get past, I think it's like 10 or 11, we just call them like a 12-gon. An equilateral, equal, Equal, equa, lateral, equal sides. Equa, angular, angles, which all the angles are equal. A regular polygon is both equal angular and equilateral. So here I have all of my angles are equal, all of the sides are equal. Okay, also, Pause, write this chart down. Um, I guess it looks like after 12, we start calling them 12 agons. Okay, so a triangle you should know. Quadrilateral you should know. After that, after quadrilateral, we start turning into the pentagon, hexagon, with the gon at the end, nonagon. I just went to trivia, and this was um, an answer to a trivia question. What is a nine-sided polygon? Um, just as it's something fun uh, for you all. So some of this might show up in trivia one day when you guys are on a trivia team. So again, take a minute to write those down. Um, honestly, I didn't know what the 11-sided one was, Hendecagon, that was kind of fun. Um, but I've he I have heard of a Dodecagon. And then after it's, if it's like a 17-sided figure, we're just going to call it a 17-gon. Okay, example one, classify each by its number of sides, classify as convex or concave, and 
regular or irregular. So this is a quadrilateral. Quad four sides, lateral. Okay, convex or concave. I look at it like it doesn't have any dents in it. I kind of like our book definition when I extend all the sides. None of the sides go inside of our polygon. So it is convex. Not all the sides are equal. So this is irregular. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sided figure. Ooh, this is my notagon. But let's look at this one. I'm gonna erase those marks that I made. Those marks were just to help me tally up my sides. Using our book's definition, if I draw that line, hey, that line goes inside. So this is concave. I look at it kind of here like it has a debt. If I were to connect a, using the definition that I remember as a kid, a point here to a point out there, and hopefully I'm gonna try and make that line as straight as possible, part of my line is outside. And since not all of these sides are equal, this is also irregular. Okay, this is what I kind of expect you to know already. Um, we're gonna be going more in depth with a lot of these perimeter circumference and area as we move later on in the year. We actually do a whole chapter with it. But take a moment, pause the video, Write down the formulas for perimeter. In a circle that's called circumference. And then our area. So again, take a minute, write those down. Okay? Honestly, I kind of expect you guys to know those already. Finding the perimeter and circumference of these. Okay, so perimeter of a rectangle. You have two sides that are equal. I have two sides that are 2.3 centimeters. I have two sides that are 4.6 centimeters. So adding that all together, we get 13.8 centimeters. And remember, perimeter is a unit of length. How much, if I put a tape measure around it, how much is it going to be? Area. Area of a rectangle is 2.3 times 4.6. And that is 10.58. And that's centimeters squared. So that's how many little 1 by 1 centimeter squares I can put in this little rectangle. B, circumference. 2 pi r, since they gave me my radius, 2 pi times 4. So I'm going to leave that as 8 pi inches. Area. Pi r squared pi times 4 squared, so I have 16 pi, and that's square inches. And I want you guys to get used to leaving things in terms of pi. Um, I know there's a pi button on your calculator that we could use, but I like you guys to leave everything in terms of pi. Okay, in this example, we have to find the perimeter and area of this pentagon. Okay, so let's look at this. Some of these sides are going to be easier than others to find the perimeter. DE is actually really easy. So first I'm going to be finding my perimeter. That is 5. DC is 6. The other sides are a little bit more complicated. 
for BC, what I do is I'm going to break this down into a, like a right triangle where I have one side being four, one side being one. So BC by the Pythagorean theorem is 16 plus one root 17. Now we have this side, where AB is the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared, which ends up being root 32. Breaking that down, that is 16 times 2, which is 4 root 2. So I have a 4 root 2 in there. So then I have side AE. Side AE is 3 squared plus 3 squared. That's going to be root 18. 18 can be broken down into 9 times 2. 3 root 2. So let's add the common pieces together. So our perimeter is equal to 11 plus it's root 17 can't be combined but 4 and 3 can be combined since they have the same root attached to them into 7 root 2. I might ask you to leave your answer like that or get a decimal approximation which is 25.02. For my area what we have to do is we have to break this up into regions. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of erasing there. So I kind of like how I have this broken up already. I'm going to break this up into a triangle, a triangle, another triangle, a, rect a rectangle, and another rectangle. I'm going to start with my rectangles because those are hopefully the easiest for me. 3 times 5, so this one is 15. This one I have 3 times 4, which is 12. So I have a 15 plus a 12 plus this little triangle here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 times 1. So 4 times 1 is 4 times 1 half is 2. This triangle AOB is 1, 2, 3, 4 times 4, which is 16, cut in half is 8. And then I have 3 times 3, which is 9, cut in half is 4.5. Now again, the reason I did this is because it's this is an irregular polygon. So I had to break this up into regions I knew how to find. And I'm going to add all of these together in my calculator. This is actually my second time recording this because I messed up the last time I did it. And I get an answer of 41.5. Okay, last problem. Um, find the perimeter of a rectangle whose length is three times its width and the area is 27 square inches. So again, I think it's helpful if we draw a picture. So its length is three times what the width is. We know the area, I need to find the perimeter, okay? But I have an x in here. So I know my area is three times x times x, which is x squared. Solving for x, I first divide and then I square root. Normally we would have a plus and minus, but I only have to worry about positives. Okay, so this side is now 3, this side is 9, so my perimeter is 2 times 9 plus 2 times 3, which is 24, okay? 
And that is your lesson on two-dimensional figures.